Okay, trivia buffs, go grab your legal pad and get ready to learn more about the state capitals of the United States. To begin our journey, let's set our GPS for the original colony. Let's start with Massachusetts and the State House in Boston. By the way, one of the largest cities to host the state capital. Located in the Beacon Hill area of downtown Boston, this structure was designed by noted architect Charles Bullfinch and was completed in 1798. The Massachusetts House is considered a masterpiece of federal architecture and is among Bullfinch's finest works. The original wooden dome was covered with copper by Paul Revere's Copper Company. Surrounding the grounds are statues of educator Horace Mann, Daniel Webster, and John F. Kennedy. In front of the building is a statue of Civil War General Joseph Hooker. Taking the train south, we next travel to America's first state, Delaware, and its second largest city of Dover. Before visiting the current capital, it is worth a trip across the street to the original State House, which was completed in 1791. Today it is a museum, which features a courthouse in the original chambers of the state legislature. The current State House was completed and dedicated in 1933 and was designed in the colonial revival style, which fits right in with the surrounding buildings. In the late 1960s, north and south wings were added on the sides of the building. These Delaware Continentals are always on guard protecting this building. Also on the Dover grounds is the poignant memorial to Delaware's law enforcers, a tribute to the ones that gave the ultimate sacrifice. Just 60 miles down Highway 301, we visit our next state capital for the state of Maryland, the naval town of Annapolis. The Maryland State House is the oldest state capital in continuous legislative use dating back to 1772 four years before the country was even born. This capital has the distinction of being topped by the largest wooden dome in the U.S., constructed without nails. In trivia buffs, this two-story brick Georgian-style structure served as our nation's capital from November 1783 to August 1784. In 1818, a low brick wall was built around the structure to prevent cattle from wandering the grounds. A breathtaking tribute to Supreme Court Justice and Maryland native Thurgood Marshall can be found on the State House grounds. Also, the original Treasury Building, built in 1735, is still standing and part of the remarkable history which encompasses all of Annapolis. Heading into Virginia, we next take I-95 South to Richmond, Virginia. The former capital of the Confederate States of America also houses the current state capital and has the distinction of being designed by Thomas Jefferson. This site houses the oldest legislative body in the Western Hemisphere, the Commonwealth of Virginia's General Assembly dating back to 1619. This current Palladian-style building was completed in 1788. During the Civil War, this building served as capital to the Confederacy and was fortunately spared during the destruction of the city in 1865. And here's one for you movie lovers. This building was used to represent the nation's capital in the Steven Spielberg film, Lincoln. Before leaving the original 13 colonies, we must now head north to the great state of New Jersey and its state house in Trenton. Built in 1790, this American Renaissance style building is the third oldest capital in the U.S. This state house is unusual compared to many state capitals in that it is built into an urban setting along historic State Street and is surrounded by other legislative buildings. A wonderful memorial to World War II sits across the street from the building. It provides a fantastic vantage of the Capitol building and its bright golden dome. Our next stop takes us to the Midwest in the great state of Kansas and the Kansas State House in Topeka. The beautiful French Renaissance building is only the second building to serve as the Kansas Capitol since it became a state in 1861. This building was completed in 1903 after 37 years of construction. The dome is almost 20 feet taller than the U.S. Capitol in D.C. It features a sculpture of a Kansas Native American with bow and arrow pointing at the North Star. This 4,400 pound bronze statue was installed atop the dome in 2002. We next head north to Wyoming in the city of Cheyenne, a town founded by the Union Pacific Railroad while building the Transcontinental Railroad. Completed in 1890, the Renaissance Revival style building was completed for the cost of $150,000. The approach to the front steps features a statue of Esther Hobart Morris, who had a significant role in gaining women's suffrage in the Wyoming Territory. Another statue of Chief Washaki of the Shoshone people. 
The chief was instrumental in granting right-of-way through Shoshone land to the Union Pacific Railroad, making it possible to hook up in Utah to complete the Transcontinental Railroad. This statue gives tribute to the veterans of the Spanish-American War. Also appropriate for these grounds is a statue of the American bison, one of the true symbols of the American West. And an icon of Wyoming is this bronc Buston cowboy relief. Our final stop on our tour takes us on the old Santa Fe Trail to the 47th state in the Union, New Mexico, and its unique city of Santa Fe. Here lies arguably the most unusual of the 50 state capitals, the only one which doesn't have sides. It is the only round state capital, and it is unofficially known as the Roundhouse. The building was designed to resemble the Zia Sun symbol when viewed from above. Architecturally, the capital is a blend of territorial revival style and neoclassical. Surrounding the capital is a lush garden, boasting more than 100 varieties of plants and also displaying many extremely interesting Puebloan statues. The old capital sits nearby, and in front of this is a World War II Bataan Memorial. And there you have it, Capital Trivia Buffs, another journey, another leg across our great country. Life to the Max is brought to you by LifeTouch, photography for a lifetime.